What's going on Clarity Coders? In today's video, we're gonna talk about application programming interfaces and by the end of it, you're gonna know exactly how to utilize them. The first thing that we're gonna do is use a whiteboard to really showcase how exactly APIs work. Then we're gonna use a web browser so we can simulate a manual request to an API and see the data we get back. Finally, we're gonna move into code on Replit and we're gonna use Python to access an API using raw requests. Finally, we're going to use a wrapper library around that same API to access the same data in a more Pythonic way. Thank you to Replit for sponsoring this video. We are gonna use, utilize their free software in this video. It allows us to code in Python in the exact same environment to cut out a lot of the errors that you would see between different operating systems and different environments out there. If you'd like to learn anything else with Replit, I got links down below where you can learn Python the right way or learn how to program games in Replit. Let's not waste any more time and jump right in. APIs or application programming interfaces are all about interacting with another application. You probably do this every day when you visit your web browser. You type in some website say hotchicks.org, and instantly those chicks start popping up on the screen. You're interacting with that application. Now say you wanna do that with a Python program, and it's some big database or application of information. How do you exchange information back and forth from your program to the bigger program? Let's look at a quick example. Down in the description, you'll find a link to CoinGecko API. What this is, it's an application programming interface where you can get information about cryptocurrencies. And we can use this to feed information to programs we're making. And we can also test this by hand. So if you go here, there's some documentation. We can slide down to this get example, which we'll talk about in a minute. We're wanting to get information from this application about the coin markets. Here you can see it breaks down some of the information you have to fill out. We have to fill out what kind of currency we wanna compare it to. So Bitcoin versus USD, for example. Let's try it out. So we're gonna push this try it out button and then we'll type in USD. We go down here, we can actually execute the query and it shows what type of response we're gonna get. So it's gonna give us some information back. Let's execute it. Now you can see here that it shows an example of a curl request, and it shows an example of the request URL and the data we're gonna get back. So you can see here that it gives us back some information about Bitcoin, Ethereum, so on and so forth. Now, we just did this by hand. How could we get this into our application? Let's wait and do one more example. Let's grab this request URL. We're just gonna copy it. We can open a new tab and paste it into that, into our web browser. You'll notice here we get basically the same thing back. So it's still giving us that information back. And then we could do something with that in our program if we were making our own application. Now that's great, but how do we do that in Python or another programming language? I'm gonna head over to Replit. Thank you Replit for sponsoring this video. You can do this locally as well, but Replit gives us a great opportunity to all be on the same page. You don't have to download, you don't have to install anything. You can go to the website, sign up for free, and start running programming languages. So once you've signed up, we can create a new Python REPL. I'm gonna to go to Create, Python, you can name it whatever you want, and now I've created it. Now back to our API example. What would it look like if we wanted to use the exact same request URL that we used before and get it into our Python program automatically? The only thing we need to do is import requests. Now once we do that, we can set up a variable called URL and we can paste in that exact same URL that we copied and pasted into our browser. Here it is now. You can also see where it's filled out some of the variable parameters that were required here. So we put in USD. We need to make this a string, so let's surround it by quotes. And then we can create a variable for our response when we make our request, and we're gonna do request.get. 
and then we can pass in our URL from above. Now let's print out our response and we can also print out our response.json. Make sure these are requests and response, spelling correctly here, and we can go ahead and run this. Now the first time you run this in Replit, it's gonna do some installing of the packages themselves, which involves installing requests. That's an outside library that we're gonna use. Once that's finished, you'll see we get the data into our program. It's not as pretty as before, but it's there and we can work with it inside our Python program. Now this brought up a good keyword here, the get keyword. This is a specific type of way we're interacting with the API itself. Let's take a look at some of the other ways we can interact with an API. So we already seen the get method. We also have a put method, a delete, and a post. What these are going to do, it's going to allow us to continue to interact with our application. So with a get request, it's usually not authenticated and we can receive information back from the server. A put is going to allow us to update information on the server. Delete will allow us to delete information from the application we're interacting with, and post allows us to create new information on the application that we're working with. I have a good video out that kind of shows an example of this where I'm working with the YouTube AT API to create a fully automated channel. So what I do is use the YouTube's API to actually upload videos to the server. So do something a little more than just getting information back. Let's take a look at one more thing that's pretty handy with APIs. Other people or yourself might create what's called a wrapper for an API. Let's take a look at an example wrapper for the CoinGecko API. So someone has created this GitHub, which essentially acts as just a wrapper around the API itself. So we don't have to type those nasty long URLs anymore. So you can read through this documentation, but let's actually try to implement it in code. Now you can start up a new replit. I'm gonna use the same one here and just delete what we had before. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load in that code base. So typically you would have to do a pip install, and you can see from the GitHub itself that you could use pip install pi coin gecko. Cool thing about Replit, it's gonna do that for us. So let's just start coding. Let's say from pi coin gecko, import coin gecko API. Now we can create a new instance variable here. So we can say coin gecko API with parentheses. And now we can just print out our request from before. We can do cg dot and then they have a nice method for coin markets. And inside of there, we can pass in the USD that we wanna to compare to. Now, if we run this, it'll install the PyCoinGecko library and we will get a response back. And this is actually get coins market here. I'll clear this shell and run it again. And you can see that we get our information back in a much cleaner, Pythonic fashion. So now we've used an API, we've used the raw request that we showed before, and we also used an API wrapper. Now these can be extremely useful in your applications and a lot of more advanced APIs are gonna to have to authenticate so they know that it's your account. For example, in my YouTube one, I have to prove and log in to my YouTube account in the API in order to post videos to my account. I hope this video was helpful. If you like more videos like this, you wanna see more videos like this, let me know what you want me to talk about in the comments. And until next time, keep coding.